President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. We may now be seated. Good morning and welcome to the 14th edition of the International Conference of Information Commissioners, or ICC. To formally begin our program, may we call on ICC Chair, or ICIC Chair, Blanca Lilia Ibarra, to deliver her welcome remarks. Mabuhay. Bonjour. Good morning. Buenos días. Con la representación del Pleno del Instituto Nacional de Transparencia, Acceso a la Información y Protección de Datos Personal, personal Data of Mexico, who is, handles the presidency and the secretary of this uh, commission of commissioners of uh, commissaries it is a pleasure to give us the warmest of welcome to this uh, the 14th edition of the ICIC a space for dialogue the most important space of the day is on access to information in the entire world to make it a fundamental pillar of governance social governance economic and democratic governance in a very uh, particular manner, specific, I am pleased uh, this morning that we have uh, have the distinguished presence of no less than His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., whose presence here highlights uh, and enhances this event. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for honoring us by hosting us here. I also wish to greet the commissioners of over 30 countries of ICIC and the representatives of the organization, international organizations, as well as the uh, authorities and special guests, and of course, the authorities of the Philippine government at the national and local that have really shown their democratic um, outlook. Especially, I wish to recognize the work being by the office of the uh, uh, presidential Office on Communications, a day such as today, but in the year 1861, was the birth of Jose Rizal, your national hero, that once said, the action of governance demands that the truth and the facts are known to everybody and through all the possible channels to ensure that they can be uh, best uh, assessed. Oh, I could not agree most with his statement, what he said many years ago, because precisely that is the spirit that moves the work of ICIC to promote and to protect the legitimate right of the persons to know what is uh, happening in the public sphere, so that truth and knowledge will be available to everybody, promoting a government that are more open and more responsive, particularly now when the democratic regimes face very critical moments. It is in this sense to start our activities uh, of the 14th edition of the ICIC. 
I want to pose three basic ideas that enlighten us on the deep relationship between democracy and the right of information. First, it has to be clear that the right to information and the institutions that protect it are the outcome of the transition to democracy of the turn of the century, of the last century. We must remember that in the year 1990, there were only 12 laws that were governing this. Today, we have 135 uh, laws that govern. So there is no doubt that, our, that this is a right, is a victory, the outcome of the progress and the values of democracy and the birth of a new concept of citizenship, one, wherein they recognize the citizen as a protagonist, as a vigilant and architect of public life. It is in this framework the laws to access for information and the institutions that guarantee this right have become our indica indica indicators wherever, very probably, uh, where the uh, democracy has uh, triumphed, and where there is a scarcity of, the, of democracy and it is vulnerable, they could be in recession. We have to advance. The second thought I'd like to share with you today for the, the deliberations of the coming days. Once that institutions that represent, that we represent, uh, uh, achieved their, uh, the first uh, results and transparency became a substantive element it is at that very point the knowledge of the action, uh, action of the government and the right of information to access became a f empowering tool and also of con citizen control over the action of the authorities in power. In this context, today, the right to know is an element that could uh, collaborate to the creative of, of process to a more informed citizenship and thus more participative, and thus a mechanisms that uh, will uh, uh, go against opaque and distrust in government, which sometimes occurs when the authorities are do not uh, are not uh, open in their action the, in the governance. It is very clear then there is no democratic power that can survive in opaque. Uh, because it's transparency that uh, legitimizes their uh, prevalence. It's very simple. The citizens are not willing to allow what they have conquered. They will not lose what they have conquered. Neither with international organizations will remain silent uh, for, for any kind of recession. That is why I want to reiterate, and we want to be thankful I want to have the opportunity to reiterate our gratitude to the President of the Philippines. Thank you very much for joining us in our efforts. It's only through dialogue and con that we be able to achieve uh, the goals. And they are many and ambitious, as we will soon discover. This is precisely the third idea I, which I wanted to uh, put an end to this, uh, my intervention on this opening. The right of, to information shares the objectives of all democratic governments and allows the progress of society to facilitate the inclusion, social inclusion, and to channel development uh, and dialogue, as we will show in the studies and the papers and the that will be read. With uh, and it will be all be fact based. As I put uh, into my words, I want to remind one of the lessons that we have learned in the history, in the last day, relative to the core issue of this conference. Democracies, democracies are not earned once in a time and forever. They are not perpetual. To survive, they have been. And, and continuous uh, 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 pro progress and putting the citizens in the center. To achieve this, one of the preconditions is to guarantee the right to know, the right to be informed, 
and access information because that is the only way, the only way that the government can prove their trust, uh, that they deserve the trust of the citizens and reconstruct the social fabric, all which are indispensable for democracy to thrive. And what better than a conference such as this to exchange views, notes, and views at the global level? What are the best practices? What are the uh, state of the art uh, knowledge that can allow us to advance towards achieve our objectives? With no further ado, my appreciation to all of you and the challenge to advance and attain our goals in a passionate weather manner. We have to prove through facts in our countries that the preservation of democracies are, can only be granted with the uh, right to access of information. And we have to strengthen the capabilities and the specialization of the uh, institutions that guarantee this. Thank you to all of you, and welcome one again, once again. Thank you, Chairperson Ibarra. And now, may we call on Presidential Communications Office Secretary Cheloy Velikaria Garafiel to give us a message and introduce our guest of honor. Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., members of the ICIC Executive Committee, Commissioners, Ombudspersons, and members of the ICIC Network, fellow workers in government, other distinguished guests, good morning. On behalf of the Presidential Communications Office, the parent agency of the Freedom of Information Program Philippines, and host of the 14th edition of the International Conference of the Information Commissioners, we welcome you to the Philippines. Being your host, this year is indeed a, a testament that the Philippine government recognizes access to information as a fundamental human right that must be upheld. We are proud to be part of this important discourse that will greatly impact the lives of the people we serve to officially usher us into the activities of this conference, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr. Thank you very much. Our Presidential Communication Secretary, Secretary uh, Cheloy Garofil. The uh, International Conference of Information Commissioners, President, Commissioner, and Chair, Blanca Lilia Ibarra Cadena. International Conference of Information Commissioners, Chairpersons, and Advocate Pansi Tlacula. Pasay City Mayor, uh, Imelda Calixto Rubiano. Uh, the officers and members of the International Conference of Information Commissioners, my fellow workers in government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is with great pride and delight that I welcome our distinguished guests and participants to this 14th edition of the International Conference of Information Commissioners. Our special greetings go to those who are visiting the Philippines for the first time. We hope that your stay with us will be pleasant and has been pleasant thus far. We will do all that we can to make sure that your visit here will be a memorable one. We are very honored not only to have been selected as a host for this year's event, it is also a great distinction to be the first Southeast Asian nation to become part of the ICIC and the founding member of Asia's network of access to information bodies. On behalf of the Filipino people, I congratulate the ICIC for all its efforts in advancing the people's right to access information and to fostering a conducive and inclusive atmosphere for the healthy exercise of this universal human right. Through this important advocacy, it can be said that the ICIC 
is globally instrumental in promoting full human development by shaping minds, by shaping our consciousness. The Philippines stands in solidarity with the ICIC and the entire international community in this advocacy. As a nation with a robust democracy, we reaffirm our commitment to champion this basic human right. It remains indelibly etched in our fundamental law. We value its potency to empower our people to make informed decisions, to participate fully in the democratic process, and hold the representatives accountable without fear or apprehension. In 2016, through an executive order, the right to access information was further emphasized through the People's Freedom of Information program. By establishing clear and balanced parameters, the program has promoted further transparency in government transactions and full accountability of our officials, especially those in the executive branch. Needless to say, it has become a platform to facilitate efficient delivery of basic services to our people. In recent years, the FOI program has leveraged available technology and digital platforms to be a greater service to our people. But we are pressing forward in our efforts to promote our people's twin rights of information and to good governance. We have placed these principles at the very core of our Philippine development plan for the next six years. Notably, our FOI program serves as the basis for the e-governance initiative, which is among this administration's high priorities. The initiative advocates the streamlining and digitalization of the key services of various government offices and local government units. And this seeks to consolidate the access to information by our citizenry. We work with our legislative, legislative branch for the enactment of an e-governance law so as to provide a stronger mandate and a broader reach. Of course, we also have to highlight that the FOI program has greatly advanced the campaign against misinformation and disinformation in the country, a problem that we in the Philippines also suffer from, as I guess all of us do around the world. Like everyone here, we too recognize as a matter of principle that fake news should have no place in modern society. And as part of our efforts, we will undertake a media and information literacy campaign which shall be digital, multimedia, and youth-oriented. Our people can be assured of the continued implementation of the FOI program in the executive branch through the Presidential Communications Office. At this juncture, I re reiterate our call not only to the executive branch, but to all branches of government to genuinely uphold and give effect to the people's freedom of information in the course of our day-to-day -day operations with good faith and with openness. Undeniably, this is to our best interest as a nation. It is a key to our pursuit of good governance, improved public service, and a more progressive and sustainable society. We wish ICIC the very best in its advocacies and efforts across the globe. We share the belief that the efforts that you make that makes the world a truly inclusive, just, and simply a better place to live in. Beyond this event, the ICIC can be assured that the Philippines will continue to promote freedom of information. With a whole-of-nation approach, we will strive to maintain a government that is not only effective and efficient, but also transparent and accountable to our people. I hope that you will all find your stay here in the Philippines meaningful and memorable. More importantly, I wish for the success and the lasting positive impact of this event and its succeeding editions. Mabuhay ang ICIC, mabuhay ang karapatan ng isang katauhan sa malayang impormasyon. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Mr. President. At this point, May we request the president to kindly grant us a photo opportunity. May we call on stage 
the executive committee members of ICIC. Thank you. Please exit to your right. Next set of ICIC members, you may now proceed on stage. Thank you, please exit to your right. Next set of ICIC members, please proceed on stage. Thank you. Please exit to your right. Next set of ICIC members, you may now proceed on stage. <laughs> 